Hello everybody, it's been quite a while and since I made my last video like this, you know, probably know me better from the shows Nothing But The Truth or Hour Of The Truth, the one that I'm pursuing right now for the last weeks and I probably will go on to do so also, but there's been something nagging on me uh, a long time already. When you follow my channel a little bit, then you probably remember the upload that I did some time ago. The only new thing in this world is the history you don't know, part 1 and part 2. And that deals with a little bit reading of the book Rulers of Evil from Tupper Saucy and also from uh, Milton William Cooper or Bill Cooper book uh, Behold a Pale Horse. And I was hoping that uh, people would start reading these books afterwards and maybe discuss that, or whatever, or just to make them known anyway. Now in the meantime I've been doing a lot of study more of course, because it's been a year or a year and a half since I published that video now, and um, it occurred to me that it is still very important to make people know the book, at least the book Rulers of Evil from F. Tapa Saucy because in the radio shows that I did there are also um, oftentimes quotes taken from that book. And you know, I was thinking about making an online reading of the whole book. I mean, this is not a short one. Uh, I don't know how many pages it has already. It's, uh, I can check that out because I have the PDF here to read it. But anyway, I was thinking about doing an online reading and probably a little bit as far as I can doing an analysis of that book during the reading. But before I do that, I just took a few excerpts from the book that I want to uh, to read right here right now and then I will do I will I will put two boxes two comment boxes in the video that's uploaded on YouTube and in the one box I will ask you to give it a thumbs up if you think that I should do a book reading of the whole book and in the other one I will ask you to give a thumbs up if you think that I should not do a reading of the whole book of course, this will not be one video or two videos because, you know, therefore the book is much too long. Uh, it has more than 300 pages as far as I know right now. So I think that um, these will probably be a lot of uploads. But anyway, I'm trying to do that. And you have to know, I haven't read the book in its totality up to now for myself. I think I came until page 90 or 95 or something else like that. And uh, I want to read it for myself but I will even have a stronger motivation if my listeners say, well, we like you to read this book and we would like to listen and discuss it along with you, along with the videos that you publish on that. So, uh, today I've set myself down to do a little bit reading of the beginning of the book um, that comes from, <coughs> not uh, Tapper Saucy himself, but that is more of an explanation in the beginning of the book and tells you what it's all about. Then I will read a few excerpts uh, that are taken from a few pages and uh, I will read them to you and after that you'll be the judge and tell me, well, can you stand my voice reading for an hour <laughs> or something like that? Are you interested in following this and are you interested in, in, interested in getting to know the facts that F. Tapper Saucy told us uh, in this book? So I'm going to start right here with the beginning of the book where it states the follows, quote, Rather than pass through the Atlanta Federal Prison Camp gate to serve a sentence for a tax misdemeanor back in 1987, author F. Tupper Saucy chose to become a fugitive in order to freely investigate his adversary, the United States of America. What he discovered was valuable new proof of a vast Roman Catholic substratum of American history more specifically that Jesuits played eminent and underappreciated roles in persuading New Englanders to rebel against their mother country in 1776. Indeed, according to Saucy's groundbreaking discoveries, the American Revolution and its resulting constitutional republic may have been single-handedly designed and supervised by a Jesuit named Lorenzo Ricci, this country's true founding father. Provocative and utterly compelling, Rulers of Evil analyzes the hundreds of historical clues left by the true leaders of the world. It should be read by anyone desiring to know, definitely, why America works the way it does. End quote. 
So this is taken from the begin of the book and this is the first uh, part that I also read in the video The only new thing in this world is the history you don't know. You can look that up on my YouTube channel. It's some, I don't know, 30, 40 videos away from the last one published. You will find it. Not so hard. And um, that is the introduction of the book. Even to get the reader when he starts reading why he should read this book and there are a lot of more interesting things in the introduction of the book itself but now i will go on with the first quote that i will take from the book itself and um, this is taken from chapter four called medici learning and in the midst of page 23 we read the following quote machiavelli and wolsey opined that both printing and protestantism could be turned to rome's advantage by employing movable type to produce a literature that would confuse, diminish and ultimately marginalize the Bible. Cardinal Wolsey, who would later found Christ Church College at, at Oxford, characterized the project as, quote, to put learning against learning, unquote. Against the Bible's learning, which demonstrated how man could have eternal life simply by believing the facts of Christ's death and resurrection, would be put the learning of the Gnostics. Gnosticism held out the hope that man could achieve everlasting life by doing good works himself. To put it succinctly, Bible learning was Christ-centered, Gnostic learning was man-centered." I find the whole chapter of Medici learning very interesting, but this is one of the most profound paragraphs that I found in there, and that's why I wanted to read it to you. Gnostic learning, man-centered learning, man-centerism, that is all the Roman Catholic Church is all about. When you follow my latest uploads, you surely will know that. And even at that time, in 1520, that is an earlier quote that I read already in one of the shows on Hour of the Truth, as far as, as, far as I remember, in page 24 of Rulers of Evil, um, there is an excerpt of Martin Luther that he wrote in 1520, and that goes as follows. Quote, Martin Luther seeing that learning against learning was the, fur uh, the future of Christianity, voiced an appeal to the ruling classes in 1520, in which he wrote rather prophetically, listen, Though our children live in the midst of a Christian world, they faint and perish in misery, because they lack the gospel in which we could be trained and exercising them all the time. I advise no one to place his child where the scriptures do not reign paramount. Schools will become wide open gates of hell if they do not diligently engrave the holy scriptures on young hearts. Every institution where men are not increasingly occupied with the word of God must become corrupt." End quote. And of course, when you followed my uploads on Nothing But The Truth, where we were speaking about the Ten Satanic Commandments, um, these videos are called Externalization of the Hierarchy. We start with the first point that Alice Bailey from Lucy's Trust made in the 1920s, that the first action they have to undertake is to take God out of the equation, take God out of our daily lives. And how did they do that? Well, in 1963, they abolished the morning prayer in American schools. American schools are visited by children from the age of six years on. So, when you take out the morning prayer, don't you take out God of the equation? Don't you take God out of the school? And even more so, when then, later, you teach them evolutionism, and for that I ask you to watch the videos of Kent Hovind, all these videos that deal with evolution also take out God of the equation and God out of their lives. And what is the result? The hearts of the people and the hearts of the children will be hardened. And they forget about God and they only learn about man, Gnosticism, just exactly as we are told in the first part of Rulers of Evil that I just left. Gnosticism held out the hope that man could achieve everlasting life by doing good works for himself. So it's a good work to educate children, right? 
but then you have to see how you educate them. Okay, I will continue on chapter 5. There is a very short quote that I want to read to you. Chapter 5 is called Appointment at Cyprus. In Martin Luther's opinion, quote, as far as God is concerned, Jerusalem and all the Holy Land are not one whit more or less interesting than the cows in Switzerland. End quote. <laughs> I find this a very profound quote from Martin Luther. The Holy Land. You know what they call Israel, the country founded after World War II in 1948 today. Who founded that country? Zionists, most of the people say, not knowing that all these Zionists are papal court Jews, Hofjuden, like the Rothschilds, who are, which we will see later in this book, are just the guardians of the Vatican treasure. And who are behind these papal knighthoods? Of course, for a big part, the most part even, the Knights of Malta. And I made another video under the name of, in the, uh, in the playlist, Nothing But The Truth, on this, uh, the power of the Sovereign Order of Malta. Watch that video and learn how that all goes together. But Martin Luther said this in his time. At that time, Israel didn't even exist. And why does Israel exist today? Well, if I'm going to discuss this right now, this will go much farther than I planned on this little video to make, which I'm coming to an end after the next quote, to keep it short this time. But uh, when you followed my videos on uh, nothing but the truth, the greatest deception since the Garden of Eden, and uh, the second part of that called um, Satan's Paradise, then you know what the agenda behind the finding of this new Israel what I call New Israel now, that state that was made there in 1948, what the real agenda behind that is. The again playing of the 69 week of Daniel's prophecy without le uh, with leaving out, of course, the by Jesus Christ 2000 years ago perfectly fulfilled 70th week. Because the Jesuits, the Vatican, teach futurism. Well, I don't want to go too far into that right now. I just want to end this video now with another quote from chapter 7, which is called The Finger Stroke of God. Quote, When Ignatius, and uh, just to verify this, this is Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuit order in 1534. When Ignatius concluded his presentation of the fourth oath of induction, the Pope reportedly cried out, Hoc est digitus Dei, which means in English, this is the finger stroke of God. On September 27, 1540, Paul III sealed his approval with the highest and most solemn form of papal pronouncement, a document known as a bull, from the Latin bulla, meaning bubble, denoting the attached ovoid or circular seal bearing the Pope's name. Paul's bull ordaining the Jesuits is entitled Regimini Militantis Ecclesiae, on the supremacy of the church militant. The title forms a cabalistic device common to pagan Roman divi divi divining, sorry. known as not Notaricon. This device is an acronym that enhances the meaning of its initialized words, Remini Militantis Ecclesiae produces the notarican R, brackets, Rome, O, M, E, R, M, E, Regimi Militantis Ecclesia, R, M, E, put O in the middle, and you have the empire, whose salvation the Society of Jesus was ordained by this bull to secure through the arts of war. End quote from this chapter 7 part that I was going to read. Now I have even prepared more chapters to read, but I want to keep this video quite short. And um, that is why I'm going to stop this right now. And uh, I just want to ask you to go to the uh, two boxes in the video that are provided for you to thumbs up if you want to 
make me a whole online reading of the book of Tapa Saucy's Rulers of Evil or a thumbs up if you don't want to. I will probably read the book anyway, but it is even a possibility to share that with all of you in that way. So, uh, thank you very much for listening and I hope you will do the vote and please be honest, only vote once and whether vote for the reading or against the reading so that I can take for myself a, a normal uh, that, that I can form an, an, that I can make an informal decision about that so that I know that only everybody voted once that would be really nice and of course you can comment in the video to whether support this idea or not to support it I know that I am not an English native speaking person so my pronunciation of some words sometimes here and there is maybe a little bit difficult but you know we're all not perfect and I just do what I want to do and uh, what I think God called me to do and um, as I already said on other broadcasts um, this is the thing that I think God wants me to do to teach the people about this very evil system that is ruled by evil people that is why Tupper Saucy called his book Rulers of Evil. All right? So I thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a nice day. God bless you. Until the next time, bye-bye.